from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I understand you've been trying to get in touch with me, Dollar. That's right. Okay, what's up? I got some news for you, Sergeant. Mavis Gale was once married to a small-time movie actor named Tom Sanford. Seems he was murdered during a hunting trip in the Sierra some 27 years ago. So? Mavis Gale just identified Barney Slade as Tom Sanford. What? Same man, Sergeant. She's still at the mortuary? Yeah, the manager's office. I'll be over in five minutes. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Ocean Park, California, to State Unity Life Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Silent Queen matter. Expense account continued. (music) Item four, 10 cents, a cup of black coffee from Mavis Gale, queen of the silent flickers. While she drank it, I elbowed my way past Barney Slade's friends gathered in the hall just outside the mortuary office and walked out to the street to do a little quiet thinking. I didn't have time. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Dollar. Hmm? Oh, uh... Is it a fact uh, about Mavis Gale, I mean, uh, she was Barney's wife? Why'd you pick that up? Well, Mort thought he heard her say so. Mort? A manager of the funeral parlor. You were in his office, helped carry Miss Gale there... Is it a fact, Mr. Dollar? How do you know my name? I was gabbing with Twyla earlier tonight. She's the girl at the change desk in the Penny Arcade. I know. Then I seen you and Sergeant McKay come out of Barney's apartment. Who are you? Uh, Frank Jessup. I run the mermaid bit over on the pier. You know, three baseballs for a quarter and you... You try to dunk the doll in the water tank, yeah. I uh, figure Mort heard right that Mavis Gale used to be Barney's wife. Well, that's what the lady said. Oh, how do you like that? Old Barney married all this time into that Mavis Gale, old-time movie star. Never breathed a word of it to any of us. <laughs> sure can't get over it. And him being a picture player in the old days, too. Yeah. Do you recall ever seeing her around the arcade, Mr. Jessup? Nope. I think I would have recognized it tonight when she came in the mortuary. Real handsome woman. Can you think of anyone Barney might have told about his past? Well, I don't think any of his friends knew Mr. Dollar. Including Twyla James? Well, why do you ask that? Has she been with him long? Close to five years. Well, what are you driving at, Mr. Dollar? Barney was still a pretty good-looking guy. Well, she liked him a lot. And vice versa? Barney never talked it over with me. What did he talk about? Well, fishing mostly, and Pinochle. He was crazy about Pinochle. Best I ever played with. You play often? Average couple times a week. In Barney's apartment? Barney was kind of funny about that. None of us ever set foot in his place. Most of the time we played over at my bungalow or on Sam's boat. I see. Say, uh, you being an insurance investigator and all, I was wondering, was Mavis Gale... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Jessup. This is Sergeant McKay. Well, you said five minutes, Sergeant. You made it to three. She's still in there, Dollar? Yeah. Nice turn out of Barney's friends, only they're all out in the hall. Well, things got sort of frantic when Mavis took her nosedive. They wanted to find out why, I guess. Did they? Mm-hmm. Mort nosed it around. Was he in the office with her? Had a chauffeur. His name's Ronald. I'll send them both out. I want to talk to Mavis Gale alone. I don't think you get much out of her. She really fell apart at the seams. As it turned out, I was right, at least about McKay not getting much out of Mavis Gale. She came out of the office a minute or so later with McKay and the chauffeur on either side, and I went along with the mourners into the street. They helped her inside the big blue Cadillac, and she slumped down as far as she could get in the back seat, covered her face with a handkerchief. Then she was gone. Okay, you people, break it up. You came here to see Barney, remember? Sergeant. What is it, Dollar? Would you happen to remember Mavis Gale from the old days? When she was a star, I mean? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Was she a pretty good actress? I'd say she was. Do you think she still is? If you're referring to that fainting spell, Dollar, you tell me you saw it. Ah, It looked pretty genuine. 
So? I just wondered is all. Just wondered. Expense account items five and six, four dollars sixty cents, one morning newspaper and cab fare to Mavis Scales Bel Air home. Now that Barney Slade had been identified as Tom Sanford, husband of the old time movie queen, the affair was splattered all over the front pages. There was also a complete account of the 27 year old murder case in which this same Tom Sanford had presumably been killed with a shotgun blast during a hunting trip. The big wide gates of the ex movie queen's estate were locked when I got there, but there was a phone close by. I picked it up, leaned on the buzzer. No answer. Nothing. Then I saw the car coming down the drive. I recognized Sergeant McKay at the wheel. Morning, Dollar. Hi. You have a special pass to this place? If you're figuring on having a talk with Mavis Gale, you better put it off. Doctor's orders. Still suffering from shock, huh? Yeah. And I figure she's leveling. Hmm. According to the newspaper, she and Tom had a pretty stormy time of it during their brief marriage. She was a star and he wasn't. Maybe that had something to do with it. She was also pretty popular in the film colony. Oh, Tom had a few buddies, too. At least four. The men who went on that hunting trip with him. The case was investigated pretty thoroughly. They came out of it clean. You know what? It'd be interesting to find out who wanted Tom Sanford dead, though, wouldn't it? The fellow hunter who got his face blown off by a shotgun blast wanted Sanford dead. Only apparently Sanford beat him to the draw, right? Do you think somebody might have hired that would-be killer who instead became the victim? What are you getting at? So the person who did the hiring thought the mission accomplished, but then recently learned that Tom Sanford was still alive, posing as Barney Slade. (laughs) You really have an imagination. So this time he does the job himself. Or herself. It's possible. Look, I know Mavis Gale stands to collect 25,000 insurance. Unless. Oh, sure, unless you can hang it on her. Two attempts on hubby Tom Sanford. I'm not trying to hang this on anybody, Sergeant. The insurance company hired me to turn in a report, and they'll pay off according to that report. I just want to be sure, that's all. Okay, relax. If you're going back to the beach, get in. Oh, thanks. Why do you think he did it, Sergeant? Why do I think who did what? Sanford. 27 years ago on a hunting trip. Why do you suppose he planted his identification and clothing on the man who tried to kill him and vanished? Who knows? Maybe he was in a jam. Like the idea of letting the world believe he was dead. And how about those question marks on Mavis Gale's photographs? A tie in there, maybe? We've been through that. Barney could have made those marks himself. Well, then here's a thought. Barney or Sanford, whichever you want to call him, might have wondered... Could his wife have hired the killer? And is that why he drew those question marks? I thought you decided the killer drew them. All right, assume the killer drew them. Why? You tell me. Well, it would certainly attract attention to Mavis Gale, wouldn't it? And Eliminator is a possible suspect? As far as Barney Slade's death is concerned, yes. You're really determined to go after this woman, aren't you? Look, McKay, I told you all Okay, okay. Assuming the killer drew those question marks to direct attention to Mavis Gale... Why would he want to do that? I can make a guess. Can't you? Yeah. Could be blackmail. But why wait all these years? For the simple reason he just picked up a little information recently. Maybe he got it from one of the men who were on that hunting trip. Think they're still around? Expense account item seven, $10.50. Care, fair, and tips. It took me that long to find Milo Martin, actor's agent, one of the men who had been on that hunting trip 27 years ago. He operated out of a plush suite of offices on the Sunset Strip. He wasn't in, but his secretary, a friendly and eager little doll named Lana, gave me a list of places where I might find him. I finally did. Out on a ranch near Chatsworth, where a movie company was filming an epic. Yep, a western. What else? Milo Martin was short and round. He wore cowboy boots, dungarees, no shirt. He was sitting on a wide, flat rock, sunning himself. Oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. I read about it in the morning paper. It came as a tremendous shock. Tom, alive all these years? It's incredible. It's fantastic. Well, according to newspaper accounts, you were the one who first discovered the body that day 27 years ago. A horrible experience. Terrifying. and never forget it. We had been searching the hills all night, and then in the cold gray of dawn, there he was in the ravine. Tom. Only it wasn't, Tom. 
But the police are certain. I mean to say... Miss Gale positively identified the man known as Barney Slade to be Tom Sanford. Running at Penny Arcade in Ocean Park. It's incredible. Well, then who was the man I found in that ravine? We don't know. We may never know. And he wanted to kill Tom. But why? You have no idea why anyone would have wanted to do away with him? No, of course not. Oh, I knew Tom was a wild sort. He never got along with most people, but, well, to resort to murder. You were his agent, weren't you, Mr. Martin? Yes, yes, I was. I must confess I only took him on as a client to please Mavis. Oh, you also represented Miss Gale? I did. She was... Oh, she still is a truly wonderful person, Mr. Dollar. Uh Ah. I understand the two of them weren't getting along too well. Oh, that would be putting it mildly, Mr. Dollar was one frightful row after another, wild, hysterical sort of row. What did they quarrel about? Well, Tom was quite a gambler, and he also drank rather heavily, and he also fancied himself as quite a, a ladies' man. Oh, and this made her sore. He was also extremely jealous. Oh? Mavis ever give him good cause to be? No, of course not. Oh, he was always imagining all sorts of fantastic things about her. Actually, she was very much in love with him. That was my impression, at least. Tell me, Mr. Martin, those other men who were on the hunting trip, are they still around? Well, let me see now. There's Trev, for one. Uh, Trev, that's Francis Trevelyan, used to be Miss Gale's cameraman, independent producer now. His pictures aren't very good, but they make money. Well, how about this uh, Jarvis Pocket? Jarv? Uh, Let me think now. Oh, excuse me. Are you ready, doll? Okay. That's Saul, the director. He's a friend of mine. Look, about you. You like stage coaches, Mr. Dollar? Well, I can take him or leave him. Look, what well, come about along. this? They're finished up here. We'll ride the coach back to the ranch house. It's only a few miles, maybe five. And this contraption? Oh, you'll love it. Yeah. All right, now, yeah. Get the board, Mr. Dollar. Oh, brother. Hey, it's not too roomy, is it? Okay, doll. Let it go. <laughs> oh, how do you like it, Mr. Dollar? I know how John Wayne feels. Uh, uh, let me see now. You you were asking about... Jarvis Pocket. Uh, now, faster, doll. Faster. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Expense account. Item eight. 81 cents. One bottle of rubbing alcohol. It was late that afternoon when I got back to my hotel, but before I could use the alcohol on my aching bones, the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. McKay here. This time I got news for you, Dollar. You ought to be real pleased. Yeah, when will I sit down? Oh, on second thought, maybe I won't. Okay, Sarge, let's have it. Mavis Gale said she didn't know her husband was alive all these years, that he was using the name Barney Slade, running that arcade in Ocean Park. So? So maybe she didn't tell us the truth. What do you mean? We got a witness, Dollar. Someone who saw Mavis Gale hanging around the Penny Arcade two nights before the murder. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a bowl of lentil soup, and I almost wind up in a cemetery. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Adrian John Doe, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 